more reflective and able to, to, yeah. to navigate. Um, whether you're doing that for commercial gain or, or artistic production, it doesn't. The recognizing the value of that kind of space, both yeah. the physical space within the Disney Corporation, but also like the one's own like practice. Like, yeah. yeah. The other thing I wanted to say about process, I'm going to kind of do what I'm going to do one pop. Like, I, think I, should, I think I should. Yeah. But I think there's something very much about. Um, in for, you know, the, the craft within a poster, the, the best crafted projects I have made, but that have involved from the outset the designers, like in you know, in the particular kind of like, you know, I mean, thing in the small town, there was, there was a, a lighting designer, a sound designer, and like a stage designer, like involved from the outset and in every phase of it. Um, even when particularly the lighting designer, like it was only like in like stage six that we needed lighting. But because he'd been like present all the way through, he had an equal ownership, like, um, and also an understanding of like you know, what this was that we were making, so that the lighting wasn't just kind of like made and this was going to brief. It was like with a deep understanding of like what the piece was. Yeah, like. And a commitment to the yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's something about just you know making sure that you have the people who represent like those. Um, those so craft, crafted processes. So it's well. that tied to the we in, in projects and in organizations, right? My question is when the focus is on the subjects, yeah. the I or the we, I think that might be um, in a way, well, it's different than to have to focus on the need or on yeah. the actual project. So it's so rather than saying, yeah. I should write the research yeah. question that we're discussing, so you know. Seriously. We're, <laughs> we're discussing how labs create cultures that behave oh, like organizations. So really this is about this is about inventing a new form of organization really? entirely. Good. Did you solve it before we arrived? Well we're <laughs> we're we're on the Uberization of creative production ah, services. Ah, right. And at the other end we're talking about maybe for this to work. Hmm. One of the biggest questions is what is the process of being a member that could access this mm. or yeah and having a singular mm. focus you know mm. so people are basically buying into a shared vision yeah. if you have that vision you're interested in that vision then you yeah. can become a member you know and then when you become a member this whole world opens up to you and i think but going back to this idea of the shared vision that's i'm going to uberize yeah. the art i think it's key this question about the shared vision and that's why, yeah, yes. and that's why the, 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 the question perhaps Do you want to draw a key there? I don't, I'm not very good at drawing keys. <laughs> yeah. So the, que the, 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 question is, the question is, in a way, uh, what is the need on the light vision? I mean, what is the, the problem that needs to be solved? Yeah, exactly. What's the problem that needs economic, to be solved? The economic conditions of artists was my starting point. OK, but, but uh, other from than or, I mean, not just that, because or yes, art, you know. I mean, and, and I think it's, it's this shared vision thing, and whether that vision is. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, whether that vision. Fair. And, and to build on the sort of 20, 20 years of knowing who the right people might be to bring into the into this particular one. Um, yes, we're, everyone says, do you need a project manager? Do you need a project manager? <laughs> 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 What have I, um, what have I missed so far? Um, we talked about there's some tension with it, with its use in arts practice, whether in a gallery or maybe in a theatre. You've got to you've got to ship something, so you've got to come down I think to something. If I may on that yeah. one, there's, I think there's a difference between prototyping in a theatre versus a, a game yeah. design context. Like game, the game, then? game designers are very keen on iterative design, yeah, yeah. where they make sure. the animation and test it really yeah. quickly, and they almost expect it to be a failure, and they build upon yeah. a failure. Whereas theatre, because it's built upon trying to satisfy an audience or expecting performance, yeah. tends to be more positive results oriented rather than actively trying to cultivate productive failures. So I think there's a, for me, there's been an interesting difference between the two. But there is a prototyping space, isn't there? Although it's very jammed down the end, which is pretty useful. If you look at the diamond model yeah. again, is that actually where, you know, we're talking about this boundary, I suppose, of. of the ideation versus yeah. the refinement mm. but in some places that boundary yeah. is a lot fuzzier than in others i suppose yeah. and it's i think from yeah. what you just said it often comes down to the audience 
was potentially. What do you mean? That the like it's a big like public festival, and people it's a brilliant game, um, but nobody wanted to play it like because they were sort of like ah oh, that sounds it's for kids like I'm too old to be yeah, doing yeah, that yeah, yeah. Like, within a kind of within a public kind of context that's Even. the kind of um, the kind of response like within sort of that and um, so that's kind of who ended up playing like um, and that. And there had been another, you know, maybe if I hadn't been like sort of just kind of going at the start, starting with like, do you want to play a game? Rather, here's a specific thing, yeah, like, and then although that requires a longer, yeah. Yeah. Sort of like, yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. your company did something at the BAC's one on one festival, the, um, the, the Loveliness one. Project. And I remember that that was. Um, that was characterized to me as a treasure hunt rather than a game. Something about it being, and the thing is, when it comes to games, like it took me like about three years to realize I actually liked them because I kept hearing the word and being like, no, <laughs> I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. go do that. Yeah, to finish it. <laughs> yeah I was like, I like need, I get way too intense about it. Um, and something about that being called a treasure hunt, that was like one of the first theater games I ever did was just because it was called a treasure hunt. It scared me less than if it had been called a game. Mm. You know what I mean? I have no idea why that is. I think it is because of and it was, and that was, that was very specifically taken because also that we knew that would create an expectation that we were then going to tilt in terms of what the treasure actually turned out to be at the end of it. Yeah. Mm. So it's, mm. it's why I think companies like Yumi Bum Bum Train and Secret Cinema don't call themselves theatre because they don't they think of it more as a ride or That's as an immersive experience. What do they call themselves like immersive experience? Secret so Cinema. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Yumi Bum Bum Train it's like I don't actually know what they call themselves. Like, um, <laughs> they, stay, they stray away stay away from defining themselves as anything. No, really. it's just a ride. I mean it's but fun. Even, but, but, yeah. but they took the night uh, for just yeah. one moment. <laughs> so, one moment. Yeah. So yeah, this this is the end. Yeah. Oh, this is the end. But um, maybe end. each group have another couple of minutes just to sort of wrap up into three thoughts that the facilitator wants to share with everyone else. So in a couple of minutes, I'm going to go around the tables, give you the microphone, and ask you to please share with us about three things that you think kind of sum up the areas of discussion that you've had.